Hello and welcome to this late morning taste challenge. We have Gibsons from probably, can't say for sure, 1972, although the company was founded in 1837. Don't even bother on the website because it won't tell you anything, except we have a new label. Well, that's nice, but um, it's 80 proof. It's aged 12 years. That's all we knew. It's owned by, well, and we also know it's owned by um, Grant, uh, William Grant and Sons. Same people make Grant's Scotch, which I've never had. James P. Madonna said it's really good. I've had the Clan McGregor. Okay. This is a big bottle, a big glass bottle, and I got it for $9.99 at Savannah Discount Liquor Store in Marrero, Louisiana on Louisiana Highway 45 northbound. <laughs> Look on a um, map, you could find it's easy to find. Easy, get on Highway US Highway 90 business route, the West Bank Expressway. See, you see the sign that says 45, go south, stay on it. You can't miss it, Savannah discount. But anyway, unusually low, unusually low price. My friend David said he likes it. I don't really like it. it seemed like G.F. Gibson's fine. It seems like the more I drink it, the less I like it. But we don't agree a whole lot on taste. We agree sometimes. Well, it's probably 70, 30. Uh, I'm exaggerating. We probably agree 70% of the time and disagree 30%. But on this one, he liked it. I just, I don't know, it's something or too much. It's something harsh about it especially that strong wood and that strong rye. And I like rye, Sazerac rye whiskey. I like that. I like the Buffalo Trace high rye, uh, high rye profile. I like, like it, but there's something about this one that's just yeah, harsh. Okay, so no liquor Friday, no liquor Saturday, no liquor Sunday, no liquor Monday. Oh. Uh, huh, maybe Monday. I, I forgot my schedule. None Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. But yeah, Monday, yeah, um, could be, I would say probably, probably will be Bacardi Reserva Ocho versus Bacardi Gold. Okay, I might do it Sunday, so I don't have to worry about Monday. But I'm, I, I, I'll probably do it Monday. Depending on the baseball schedule, don't want to miss games to do stink and rot and taste challenge. Oh, what is the competitor? What is the competitor? Well, this is $9.99 for this bottle. I got it on super sale because usually it's like $10.99, $11.99. This is a $7.50. That's an extra thousand milliliters. This is $7.50, and that's a $7.50 plus a thousand. This is rich and rare reserve, been on the market since around 2010. Might have been 2011. I know for sure it was no earlier than 2010, and it was no later than 2011. So 2010, 2011, can't find anything definitive, but I know it was then. The Sazerac website is basically dysfunctional now. How long will that go on? I don't know. Hopefully not as long as PAPS, which has been that way for two years. Okay. Rich and rare Canadian whiskey, a blend. Most Canadian whiskeys are a blend. Can you get single malt Canadian whiskeys? Yes. Are they common? No. Have, have I ever tried one? No. Would I be interested in trying one? Yes. Distilled in Canada in small batches and aged patiently in hand-picked oak barrels. Rich and rare reserve delivers a distinctive smoothness and an unparalleled elegance. Yeah, I think it's not really unparalleled elegance because I believe you can get stuff that's way more elegant than this. But anyway, that you know, these companies like to write all that. Uh-oh, bottled by Sazerac in Frankfort, Kentucky. You say, Frankfort, that's Buffalo Rye, Buffalo Trace. Look, let me tell you like this. If you go on the Buffalo Trace tour, it's a great tour. I love it. I loved it. I don't love it. I don't do it all the time, but I loved it. Past tense. Would I go on the Buffalo Trace tour again? I surely would. I'm not pouring anymore. Okay. Uh, 
Well, a little bit. Okay. Uh, what is that? An ounce and a half. Keep acting like this is a lot. You say you're worried about drinking too much, huh? No, I'm worried about wasting it. <laughs> I want to save it for more taste challenges. So I'm worried about it. Um, look, look, look at this cap. Nice, huh? Look, you go on a Buffalo Trace tour and they're going to show you what they want you to see, which is a lot. But they're going to show you brands that's on their Buffalo Trace distillery website. Ancient Age, Straight Bourbon Whiskey, Old Charter, Weller, all that. Blanton's, they'll take you into the Blanton Single Barrel Whiskey House. Fascinating part of the tour. They even jumped on my case. You're not supposed to be over here. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. They didn't have a sign or anything. I was just walking around. I said, I got the video, so it's okay. But anyway, uh, they were getting kind of paranoid about me taking the video, to tell you the truth. But um, they didn't say stop. They just seemed like they wanted me to. But uh, but, 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 but. but if you go on a tour, you're not going to see the Canadian whiskeys getting bottled. All right? You're not going to see this stuff. You're not going to see the scotch. Okay, they've got way more facilities on there. You go on that property, it's huge. Like you're walking around, say this is a huge place. But you see part of the hugeness. Now the other stuff in the back, to the north, to the west, over there by the river. Yeah, man, you know, that's where the all the other stuff is. Not to mention the contract, you know, stuff they do for the grocery store. So it's careful, they're careful. And then the tour guide was, uh, I didn't say anything. I just listened, but he was kind of, kind of prickly. Like you can see he was getting irritated with people. They train him to do that folksy down home. Hey folks, welcome to Buffalo Trace here in the heart of Kentucky. You know, that kind of stuff. But, um, I see, I could see that his patience was getting tried. He's like about 68 years old. I'm not an anti-age, you know, I don't, I don't, he could have been 88, I wouldn't have cared, but I was thinking, yeah, you're following your training more or less, but I could see he's getting a little testy and I thought to myself, I bet you're a barrel of laughs at your, at, in private, but, 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 but whatever. Okay. So, uh, I'm thinking to myself, I think I could give a way better tour, you know, like I would be more. I wouldn't get irritated, you know what I mean? I'd just be like more excited about it. <clears throat> but still it was a very good tour. I'm just nitpicking. Okay, Scruffy is an editor. Says ever go to Golden for a tour? I've been to Colorado, but I've never been to Golden. I went to see I toured the uh state capitol in Denver and I toured Mile High Stadium, which they demolished later. And I toured uh well, I went to a game at Coors Field. I didn't tour it, but no, I never, I never went to um, Golden. Okay, uh, I think Rich and Rare Reserve is not that great. It's kind of bland, and it's really not worth paying more for it. It's three dollars more a bottle, and it's maybe more than three dollars more, depending on where you live. But it's not worth it. You just soon get Rich and Rare. But uh, they brag about it like it's some great thing. But to me, even though it's not that good, it's way better than Gibson's. And that's age 12 years. Now, which is which? Uh, I think that is Gibson's because it's lighter. And I think that's rich and reserved because it's darker and it's probably colored because it doesn't have an age statement. Now, you might say, yeah, but it might be 12 years. Come on. You know, if it's an old age, they're going to brag on it. If it was 12 years, they'd be saying it's 12 years. It's really fabulous. It's eight years like the Bel Bl Black Velvet Reserve. It's aged eight years. Seagram's uh, VO Gold. It's eight years. Oh, boy. Uh, Canadian Club, 12 years. It's 12 years. They ain't gonna They're not going to brag on four years, which is probably what it is. Probably an extra year. Maybe it's five. Maybe. 
Canadian clubs age five years. Do they talk about it on the label? No, they don't. On the website, they very quietly say that in one part of the website. We age it five years and then they go on. Whereas older bottles of Canadian Club you might run across will say age six years. They're like, let you want you to know that. See, they want you to know that. Now, Jim Beam, Jim Beam says they're clever, you see. They used to have those commercials with the actress. And the, she's actually an immigrant from the Soviet Union, but she was saying um, Jim Beam is aged two long years more than it's required to be aged. You know what I mean? We age it two long years past what's required, but they don't tell you how long. I think on one commercial, four long years. I don't really think that's a long time, but uh, you know, well, whatever. Uh, the requirement for straight bourbon is two years. That's pretty minimal, right? Two years for bourbon. That's it. You could be a straight bourbon whiskey and be aged only two years. And is it going to be terrible? I don't know. Will it be terrible? Maybe it'll be good. <laughs> okay. Let's just do this taste challenge because I got some spinach salad I want to eat. Then some black beans and sausage and uh, the blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Beautiful weather, though. All right. Oh, that smells like Gibson's. You say, why? Because of all that heavy wood? That's right. Woo. Smell like whiskey in the barrel. Ought to go listen to Tin Lizzy. Um, but that's what it smells like. Smell like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. You know what I just smelled? Caramel candy. Werther's Original. That's what Holly's Happy Hour was talking about. She ordered 12 bags of Werther's Chewy Caramel Candies. She was like, I feel kind of weird showing you that I ordered 12 bags of it. I mean, that wasn't weird. It was kind of excessive, you know, but I just told her on the comment, I said, well, uh, I like Werther's Originals. I don't like them that much, but <laughs> she showed it. And then she might have been thinking, I don't need to be showing people eccentric behavior. But it's fine. But um, this has that Werther's Original thing. But look, 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 look. The Rich and Rare has, there's a, a smoky quality. Smoke. You say smoke. Yeah. Got that right? Smoke like a charred barrel, charred smoke. Yeah, <clears throat> a little of that rich and rare reserve, rich, uh, rich and rare flavorings. You know the, but I think the flavoring and this could be just bourbon and nothing else. Maybe rye, a little rye whiskey. I don't know what's. I, I may as well open my eyes <laughs> when I knock the glass over. What's good? What's good? Nice hat. It says Gamac. 187. Oh, like the Gamakaras that fought uh, Godzilla, the giant. Um, oh, Prey and Mantis. The Gamakaras was the Mantis. Those are nice looking puppets. They were monsters, you know, you could tell those puppets, but they did a good job of that, the Gamakaras. But look, you say it doesn't look super realistic. Oh, I didn't say it looked real. It looks more realistic than computer generated imagery. The CGI is so fake. People say, you like those movies? I said, well, I don't really like ca cartoons. All the CGI looks like cartoons to me. To me, suitmation looks more realistic. You know, people dressing up in a monster suit. It is more realistic because it's actually real. You know what I mean? Like it's a real person in a rubber suit, but it looks more real. Uh, the wood has dissipated. There is some caramel coming into play, but the rye has not dissipated. 
I know what I'm going to taste. I'm not going to like it. I know what I'm going to taste. I'm not going to like it. I know what I'm going to taste. I'm not going to like it. I know what I'm going to taste. I'm not going to like it. I know what I'm going to taste. I'm not going to like it. I know what I'm going to taste. I'm not going to like it. Well, that one didn't come across like a jackhammer so much. Hmm. Hmm. It's got me a little confused because I was expecting just to be like nailed with harsh wood and rye, but I wasn't. So, hmm. Okay. Okay. Dale Gilbertson says, last movie I saw in the theater was U571. about that u-boat oh didn't that come out about 10 years ago i heard about it it's gmac but i couldn't space it out <laughs> gmac okay so nothing to do with the gamacaras all right oh well <laughs> maybe that's the gibson sorry um the aromas got me throwed Cause that's that's pretty harsh wood and that's pretty harsh ride. <laughs> now you might say, I love whiskey that make me shiver, <laughs> that make me shudder. You know, it just. <clears throat> well, you might like that. I don't. <laughs> No shudder, just candy sweetness, smooth, smooth, Sazerac, smooth. Candy like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. I know what it is now. Sorry about the confusion earlier. These taste challenges, hey, well, that's why they're called challenge. Sometimes they can be, well, hey, well, challenging. No, no. Yikes. That is, uh, that is, uh, that is the kind of thing that I don't know how you would drink too much of that. Like you say, I'm at a party, we drink and we have a good time. I drink too much. No, not with that. Your friends would say, what's wrong? You all right? Holding down. You say, no, 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 no I'm okay. I just, it's the, when I taste it, it makes me cat, you know, shake like that. And then you let them try it. And they'd be like, ah, oh, oh, oh. you say, see, it's not like an attack. You know, I'm not having an, at an attack. I'm just so, so you would never drink too much. It'd be too, too. Ugh. G Max says, good movie though. About 16 years, it was good. Most of today's movies end with, well, that was a waste of two hours, says Dale Gilbertson. I know that's why I don't watch movies anymore. Uh, uh, I went to the superhero movies and then I was like, okay, well, I'll read the comic book, so I got to go like an obligation. In the last few Batman movies, I was at the movie theater thinking, why am I watching this? I don't like it. It's not any good. It's terrible acting. It's the crap. It's just no good. I don't like it. It's boring. I can't wait for this movie to end. How can you say it's entertainment when you can't wait to leave? So I said, that's it. I'm never going back to any more movies. <laughs> and uh, actually, I never did. Like I'll do these surveys on uh, uh, on um, what's that survey site? Um, YouGov, YouGov. Which of the following movies have you seen in the last five years? I'm like none because I hadn't been to a movie in ten years. Oh no, no, no. I'd rather watch a baseball game or a basketball game or a football game. But I would rather watch a baseball game because at least somebody wins the game. A movie is just like 
No one wins. <laughs> it's fake. And they're no good. I don't like them. And now it's all preachy. They're, they're as bad as the comics. The comic books now is all about some message. I read them and I'm thinking to myself, oh, these people have no talent. If I, if I, I only buy them for the collection, just to perpetuate the collection. I don't like them. I can't, I, every day I pray that they get canceled. Thankfully, the Hulk got canceled in 2015, May 2015. Thankfully, Fantastic Four was canceled the same month because nobody read that. I think I was like the only subscriber in America. I really almost believe that. They don't even put the forum in the comic books anymore. You know, the letters that people write to the editor, they don't even put that. They're never, they haven't been in the books for years, I think, because they're, they, they don't get any good letters. They just get people saying, this stuff's trash. <laughs> but I think the whole comic book industry is about to collapse. Uh, uh, the only reason Disney bought Marvel is to make movies, and the only reason Warner Brothers bought DC Comics in 1976 was to make movies. Because I don't think comic books make any money. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe they do. I don't know. I wouldn't recommend the hobby. In 1975, I would have recommended the hobby. In 85, I would have recommended the hobby. In 95, I'd have said, get out. Sell them all and just get out. Like, uh, like uh, Ace Rothstein in a casino. Remember what Mike Stone told him? Not Mike Stone. Uh, Alan, I don't know, they call him Stoney. He said, just get out. <laughs> just get out. That's what I should have done, just gotten out. But here I am, 23 years late, 24 years later. Oh, I mean, they've had some good stories. Some, not too many. All right, the artwork is terrible. Most of the good artists are gone. They have a few good ones, but most of them are just, but that started That started back in 1986, really, with the, with, when Todd McFarlane came in, Todd McFarlane and Bob Liefeld and all of these, oh, no. People said, what do you think about Todd, Todd McFarlane? I said, he's all right. He can't, he can't draw, but he's, you know, he's all right. He can't draw. My, maybe, maybe it goes back to Art Adams. Maybe it goes back to Art Adams. But anyway, and that was in 83, right, with the um, the New Mutant Special Edition. Remember, that? Remember, it was so thick. It was thick. Oh. All right. And Art Adams did the artwork for uh, Gumby Winter Special. That was appropriate because I was like uh, Gumby. He didn't really do a good job with that. All right. Well, anyway, uh, you say, but his detail, his detail, such. Why do you think he's got the detail to obscure the fact he can't draw? A little thing here, and there's a little lamp there, and there's a little shadow there, and there's an arm there, and there's this there. So you can't see the trees because of the woods. But then when you start looking at the the faces, you say, oh, I can draw better. I can draw a better face than that. The artwork in comic books would be all right if you didn't look at it. All right, anyway. Imagine where we were 40 years ago, 40, 50 years ago with the new gods. Jack Kirby's fourth world tetralogy, the new gods. <laughs> and now look. All right. But anyway, all right. OK. I got to stop. I get I get too upset when I start talking about that. All right. Anyway, and don't don't even talk about. 
the old detective comics and Batman with um I mean Neil Adams was good. He had flaws, but he was good. But 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 I'm talking about um Frank Robbins. Oh man. You say, no, I don't like that's too noir. It's too noir. It's too comic book art noir. I know that's what it's supposed to be for that Batman detective. This is clearly Gibson's and I clearly don't like it. <laughs> so can you can you can you pick up what Gibson's is by tasting it? Yeah, that's the only problem. You got to taste it. Have you read American Gods? No, I never heard of it. All right. All right. So this is Gibson's. Please be GF. <gasps> No, did I make a mistake? Did I pour the wrong thing? That can't be rich and rare with that harsh nastiness. There's no way. There's no way that can be rich and rare. I screwed up. You say you were drinking all morning. I wasn't drinking. No. I did Ballast Point Brute IPA, which I would highly recommend, by the way. All right, let's see. A little bit. A little taste. Because I put R and R R. I remember Rich and Rare Reserve wasn't that good, but it didn't, it wasn't, didn't taste like sandpaper. Do over. Yeah. Do, says Scruffy. All right. Do over. Um, all right. Mm. It's kind of harsh, but... I'm, Hey, well, all right, okay. I concede. Uh, I'll concede defeat. Well, you know how it goes. Well, did not complain. <laughs> you said, "Don't you, you get nervous?" Not you. I know you're nervous. I'm not nervous. Um, did not complain about rich and rare reserve anyway. I said I wouldn't buy it over rich and rare. Rich and rare, rare tasted better. <sighs> Look, let's. Let's get down to it. I don't like either one of these whiskeys, okay? You say, oh, no, 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 no. In 2017, you did Rich and Rare Reserve, and you talked about how good it was in a solo review, and then you did Gibson's in 2019. And, you know. Look, all right, that's solo reviews. They're not in competition. These whiskeys taste totally different, almost totally different when you do them solo by themselves in isolation and you put it in competition. If you don't believe me, try it, but you got to do a blind taste test, okay? Uh, but now, golly gee, when I put these things in competition, it is a nightmare. I mean, within context, you understand? Uh, so Gibson's Finest, that has to be one of the most underperforming products I've ever tried. And y'all know I've tried a lot. <laughs> I gotta take, I, I, okay, I'm just gonna smell it. I'm not gonna taste it. I don't know, I can't figure these out. They're supposed to be elevated. They're supposed to be better than normal. What's going on? I'd probably buy some Seagram 7 and call it a day because I know nothing about whiskey. Well, if you bought Seagram 7, you'd probably get something better than these two. I think Seagram 7 tastes better than these two. And I don't care what anybody says. Gibson's Finest is harsh. It's like, it's, it's just, and then Rich and Rare is the same way, reserved. So, I, I mean, I, I would take Seagram 7 Crown from Indiana over these two any day of the week. And if I put them in competition, it would destroy them. But that's, that's an American whiskey, so I don't do cross-styling. You know, I, I don't do Canadian versus American. I'm not going to do Scotch versus bourbon. There's not a whole lot of sense to that. Although you you could still say you prefer one brand over the other. I understand that. So Rich and Rare Reserve and Gibson's Finest, I got them mixed up. I got overconfident because I was on a roll, and I was nailing them on aroma only, and I was bragging about, oh, I'm such a genius. I'm such an expert. I know everything. It's It's finally come to pass. All the experience is paying off. I've got it. It's nailed. I know it all. But yet, like the, the people building the Tower of Babel, 
it's hubris. You think you are there and you're not. I'm not building a, a stairway to heaven. I'm not building a Tower of Babel. It's all crumbling. I can't understand you. You're speaking a different language. You can't understand me. We're being chastised for our, our pride. Pride comes before a fall and this happened. Okay, so I'm chastised and and I, 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 I deserve it. Now, next week, it's going to be Gibson's Finest versus Can Royal Canadian. Uh, I'm not going to be too confident with that because uh, I, I'm a little concerned anyway. I was concerned this morning before I even started becoming prideful and full of full of uh, self-adulation of my expertise. So I would be very concerned about Royal Canadian versus um, Gibson's Finest. And Gibson's Finest, $9.99 for this huge bottle, huge bottle. Royal Canadian, $8.99 for the $7.50. My friend David almost pulled the trigger on it. He said, what is it? He said, is that any good? I said, yeah, but it's covered with dust. He didn't ask me that. So he says, I didn't ask you that. I asked you, is it any good? He was getting irritated, which is fair because I didn't answer the question directly. I said, uh, well, it's okay. I don't really like it too much, but for $8.99, I figured I could use it in taste challenges. So he said, oh, I don't want it. That was at a discount depot. I said, yeah, it's probably a good choice. It's not that good, but I bought it. It's, it's been on the market for 85 years. I figured what the heck. So, so Tuesday is going to be ch a, a real challenge. Uh, Thursday, the 18th, a week from now, no way. No way I'm going to get Gibson's Finest mixed up with Canadian Club 12 year. That's not going to happen because I, Canadian Club 12 year is so much better than Gibson's. It's laughable. It's laughable. Same price point, but no contest. If I get that wrong, I'll question everything. Today, okay, yeah, it was like a catastrophe. But to be fair to myself, I didn't like Rich and Rare Reserve from, from the first taste challenge. So if I never had these again in my life, I would be happy. Unfortunately, I have <laughs> I have this much left of Rich and Rare Reserve, about 325 milliliters. So yeah, Gibson's I got about a thousand milliliters. Oh Lord, think of all the misery I can experience with. <sighs> How do Ronna Rue says Bricks Lens, but 1970. I'm okay. I botched this examination, but it's going to happen from time to time. The less you think of, Dale Gilbertson says, the less you think you know, the smarter you are. Correct. My problem is sometimes I think I know stuff and then I find out you don't know too much. All right. Well, but anyway, so onward and upward, onward and up and upward, like they say, it's University of Southern Mississippi to the top. I plan later today to do two reviews, a solo, which won't be posted till tomorrow. Woo! Ballast Point Victory at Sea. Thankfully, in 2019, it's only 10%. Two years ago, it was 11. You say, oh, that's going to get you. You're going to be totally off the wall with your beer. Yeah, I know. And then even later today, who knows how that's going to come out? Probably shabby, to say the least. <laughs> Get ready, get ready, get ready, because it's going to be Bush Beer. People say, oh, I'm going to put a gun in my head. Bush Beer versus Coors Banquet. Now, some of you are saying, I was feeling bad. And when you mention that, I feel even worse now. Right. I like Bush Beer, though. Coors. Wait, I said that wrong. <laughs> hey, you got to excuse me. I like Coors beer, Coors banquet, Bush beer. I was drinking that yesterday and I was thinking, why do I buy this? You know, this is this nothing happening here. <laughs> All right. So how do these premium whiskeys compare to Jack Daniels or some mass produced low end says Hayes? Well, it's a good question. And they do terrible compared to low end. If you want to call Jack Daniels low end, I wouldn't call it that. I would say Jack Daniels destroys these two. 
I would say that Jim Beam makes a mockery of these two. Now that's a, a that's a lightning, you know, that's a lightning and a that's a, a flashpoint. Um, but I truly believe that I wouldn't. If you gave me a choice, would you buy Jack Daniels or these two? I'd buy Jack Daniels every opportunity compared to these two things. No way, impossibility. That could never happen. I would never choose these two over Jack Daniels on, on in any context, even the Jack Daniels Green Label. I would choose Jim Beam over these two. It's a much better whiskey. I would choose Evan Williams Green Label or Black Label over these two things. Now, does that mean I'm anti-Canada? No, it just means that Jack Daniels and Jim Beam and Evan Williams is way better than these two. And if you want to be techno, if you want to be techno, I would choose Benchmark Old Number Eight over these two. And we're talking about 80 proof across the board, so you can't say, oh, well, blah, blah is higher proof. Wrong. They're all 80 proof, and they're better than these. Bricks says the best taste in booze I ever tries is Jameson cask mates. Oh, my daughter and I did the Jameson cask mates stout, you know, with the one that was done in the stout stout uh, configuration. Beautiful product. And then we did the. Uh, oh, it was a uh, regular Jameson. Then we did a Jameson specialty, whatever it was. And that was a jewel also. Oh, Jameson. You know, on Jameson's worst day, on its worst day would kill these two. Okay. I mean, let's enough's enough. Jameson would make oh, I already said that, make a mockery. Well, whatever, whatever trite terminology you want to use, they would be defeated very easily by Jameson. And I don't even think Jameson's the greatest thing, but it would make a fool out of these two. Bush is so light compared to banquet, you will be like banquet is a lot better for sure. Oh yeah, I think I think Banquet's gonna destroy it. Yeah. Oh yeah. Hey, he says Jameson is good. It just tastes like bananas to me, but it's very high quality bananas. No, I never got that. But I I I don't have enough experience with Jameson, so there could be some credibility there. Bricks Bricks said, yeah, it was Jameson castmate stout. It was unbelievable. I would like to buy a bottle of that, um, but I've got so much of a backstock, it's scary, really. <laughs> all right, all right, anyway, so uh, the Gibson's finest, which I'd hate to try Gibson's worst. If this is their finest, I'd hate to try the worst, but uh, we're gonna put this in competition against um, uh, Royal Canadian. Yeah, there'll be about, even since it, neither one is too good. And then we'll put it in competition against the uh, Canadian Club 12 year, which will be a farce. That will really be a laugh. You want to you want to laugh, you want to watch a video that make you laugh out loud, LOL. Watch Gibson's Finest versus uh Gibson's Finest 12 year rare versus a uh, Canadian Club 12 year. That will be a joke, a pathetic, unbelievable joke. Because well, you'll see. Watch it. You'll see. You want to watch a joke? Watch it. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, uh, all right. That's it. I was a little worried about doing this examination from the start, and I said, no, no, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do it. And I'm a little nervous about it. And uh, it turned out to be as bad as I thought it would be. Thanks for watching this video production.